Hey, I'm inside the uh, garage of my RV, my toy hauler. It's very windy outside. Uh, oh, welcome to the life of Colonel Lee. I'm Colonel Lee. So I want to show you uh, the receiver hitch that I bought and installed on the back of my toy hauler. And you might be asking yourself, why do you need a receiver hitch on the back of a toy hauler? Because, you know, when you have a toy hauler, you got a big garage, right? So here's what I'm installing this receiver hitch for. Well, the main reason is we haul the four wheeler and dirt bikes that we have in the garage of the toy hauler. We go, let's say Colorado where we went this summer <clears throat> and we find an RV park, fine and great and unload the toys. Now we have to get the toys to the trails. Not all the places we go to allow you to ride your off-road vehicles on the road. In fact, where we were at South Fork, Colorado, there were many people trying this and getting ticketed. We were witnessing witnessing that <laughs> that uh, taking place while we were there. So we had to go to uh, a place where they rent out four wheelers and things like that, and they have, of course, they have trailers you can rent. So we rented a trailer for four hundred bucks. Basically, I think it was for three days that we rented it for. So. And I spent $400 on this receiver hitch and I'll show you which one that I got and where I got it from. Uh, E-Trailer, <laughs> you could have done a lot better job of packaging your uh, hitch to send it out. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So, <clears throat> but now they, they did, uh, E-Trailer did come through. I, I did have uh, some issues with the delivery. Uh, the box was all beat up and I understand you know shipping there's going to be stuff like that especially on a large heavy box like that i mean this is a heavy piece so but the way they packaged it all the little nuts and bolts you know were supposed to come in a plastic bag and they weren't in the plastic bag the plastic bag was in the box you know just completely open but there was nothing in it it's like all the pieces were thrown in and the bag was thrown in so Anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna dwell on that. Uh, the main thing is the hitch does work. I recently took it on a trip and uh, it worked great. I mean, it pulled the trailer, there was no issues. Uh, the hitch is rock solid. So the only thing is for this install, it's not gonna be easy. Now, if you're pretty good at problem solving, and you have some tools handy, you know, and you're good with tools and things like that. <clears throat> uh, this install is possible. Uh, if you're not really, oh, uh, what's the word? If you're not sure about yourself, your abilities to be able to install this. I mean, just watch the video, you'll see what you have to do. If you're not comfortable with doing that, you might just take it somewhere. And, uh, cause the other option is to have it welded on. You know, I could have had it welded on, but still some of the things I had to improvise with was still had to have been done. And it's just cheaper for me to do it. I'm able to do the work. So anyway, if you need a, uh, to haul doubles, so kind of like I do, where you haul all your toys somewhere, but then you need to haul them from the RV park to the trails, stick around. We're going to show you how to install your RV receiver hitch. Okay, so if you're wanting to install this receiver hitch to your RV, this particular hitch with my RV, this is the issue I was running into. So you have, uh, so first of all, you have three main parts to this hitch. You have two end pieces, uh, they connect to the I-beam, and then there's a square hole slot for the center piece, which runs the width and uh, those slide into the square holes and that's going to be your receiver hitch. So the problem was uh, <clears throat> the mounting plates for the I-beam is uh, squared, so it's squared off. But when you have a toy hauler with a dovetail or beaver tail, so basically the back of the your garage starts tapering down. It's just so you have a better angle of loading your toys into your garage of your toy hauler. So what that does is create a problem 
the plate does not fit in there. It, the corner of it needs to be cut off and because it's dovetailed. Now, if this was a straight uh, regular trailer, it didn't have a dovetail on the back, you know, uh, most toy haulers are gonna have the dovetail. But if this is a regular trailer RV, then you wouldn't have that issue. But this is the issue it was running into here. So I'm just gonna show you how I did it, how I retrofit these plates to go ahead and make it fit. So, sorry, this video is kind of running long. It's just, I feel like an explanation. I want to get you kind of mental picture of what's going on and where I'm starting off at and the problems that I'm having to fix that I'm running into. So there's three main components with this hitch. These side plates are attached to your I-beam and you have the center piece which has the receiver hitch. So between here and here, it will fit within the I-beams because this, this one here is for 72 to 77 inch wide. Is, uh, my toy hauler is a wide body, so it's 102 inches wide. <clears throat> but where the I-beams are, this setup will fit in there. We have, see that mark on here? We have to cut this off so it'll fit onto the I-beam. Hey, I got my grinder with the cutting wheel. I got my safety glasses on, got my gloves on. That's pretty thick metal. Let's see if we can cut through it. Here we go. Well, that cut a little easier than uh, I thought, so we're gonna take this little uh, sanding buffing uh, metal shaper wheel and kind of buff out those sharp edges real quick. Okay, let's see if our piece fits now after cutting that corner off. Oh, it does not. Okay, we're gonna have to, I thought I cut enough. We're gonna have to cut that off. All right, cut number three coming up. So we got past that little bracket, but we're still got a little resistance from this right here. Now we got to back in here and put this back into place. All right, now you can see right here, this bracket for the stabilizing jack is kind of interfering here. So on the back side, it's just like an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna take our cutting wheel and just trim off the corner of that bracket. Now all these cuts, uh, I'm making sure we're not getting too close to this hole. I wanna stay at least an inch away from that hole so I don't compromise integrity of when all this gets bolted down and you know, this undue wear and tear and stress from over time. So, I don't think this is going to be compromised any you know, if we stay away from that hole pretty good. So once we get everything where we like it, you know, I did ground, ground this off so it's smooth. And we'll hit it with the grinder one more time and then we'll hit it, we'll wipe this off, hit it with a little bit of black spray paint. So just to protect that metal there where we made our cuts. All right, so next, cut this corner piece off, see if it fits, and then hit that with paint, hit this with paint. So, just like that. Oh, we need a little 
bar. All right, so I made another little cut and then I just used the uh, metal shaping wheel to uh, kind of grind off a little bit of excess that was blocking our way there. So that worked. I'm just gonna touch this up real quick, smooth it out. All right, so now our bracket goes flush up against the I-beam here. So the next step is to drill our holes there. We got four holes, and then uh, we have two holes that go down this way <clears throat> on the flat part of the bottom part of the I-beam. So that's the next step, and then we'll have to retrofit the other bracket for the other side. So before we put this in place, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, touch this up with some black paint. And then same here. Just to help against corrosion. All right, so we got the bracket in place here with uh, some clamps. Just kind of hold it in place so we can make our marks to where the drill. Drill through the uh, eye beam. So this is where you want to be very careful, very precise on your marks. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the hole with a green marker, and I'll probably take the bracket off, drill that hole, put the bracket back on, go ahead and put the hardware on it. And then I may drill the remaining holes with the bracket attached instead of opposed to drawing all four drilling and maybe they're not, you know, lining up right. So let's do that. I think I'm going to go with this back one first, back bottom. center maybe that's gonna be kind of hard to see now we'll take our brackets off put clamps off I mean oh yeah I can see it you probably can't see it on the video but I can see it I think <laughs> might help if I wipe the metal off first. Well, it's not too bad. Got a little bit of dust. I don't want to mark over, rub over where I did a mark. Let's see. Yeah, I do see it. Uh, let's see if we can... I want to make sure and drill this hole pretty level as well. There, it looks good. Uh, not too bad. All right, so another important thing to keep in mind when you're doing this work, when you're drilling, cutting metal, you're gonna get metal shards all in your work area. So it's good to have a good, powerful magnet. Sweep up the area like we got quite a bit of shards here okay so we got the uh, washer the square washer bolt fed through there and square washer and nut on the back side so we just want to make sure that when i tighten this so i can drill the other holes to make sure that bracket stays in place. I gotta make sure that the whole bracket is flush on the I-beam everywhere. <clears throat> so right now it looks good. So we're just gonna tighten this up. Oh 
to make sure that washer stays in that position. If it goes up, it may interfere with the other hole. It's the same thing on the on both sides there. So see here what I was talking about making sure the bracket stays flush on the I-beam as we were torquing it this side rose up some so we're going to have to loosen that back up got to make sure this is flush so when we go to put our holes in everything down the line is going to be way out of kilter so if you mess up an eighth of an inch here it could end up being two inches down the road right further down the project so let's loosen that up and get that flush all right so we're flush again so the bracket is pretty stable i'm going to go ahead and drill out the other holes okay we got one side in one bracket so it's very very sturdy when you put all the bolts in. <clears throat> now, one of the problems that you're gonna run into if you do this project, if you have a uh, toy hauler <clears throat> and the back end dovetails, beaver tails down, then these brackets aren't gonna fit. As you saw, we had to cut the corner and then this landing gear bracket was kinda in the way. We had to cut and shave a little bit of that off. So this could fit squarely in here on the I-beam. Also, the pre-drilled holes in the bracket on the top, where it sits on top of the lip of the I-beam, the holes didn't line up. The, the edge of the holes came about out here, so that wasn't gonna get very much, it wasn't gonna bite into this piece of metal, which we need to do that. So I just drilled my own holes, All right? I got uh, about a half inch away kind of angled it a little bit that way not a whole lot but just enough so the head of this bolt could clear the bracket so once I got the holes drilled I had to take these two bottom bolts off so that I could slip this bolt in also this washer there I had to cut part of the edge off so I used the cutting wheel, the grinder. I just cut the edge off so that this washer could fit in here. Otherwise, it wasn't gonna fit. So, so it just takes a little uh, improvising, a little bit of patience. Uh, so far, it's working really well. As far as uh, strength and integrity of the the unit itself so it's not flexing at all it's really solid so I'm pretty confident that uh, once we get all this done it's gonna it's gonna serve its purpose well all right so next thing to do now is do all everything that we did on this side to the other side I'm not gonna film any of that because it's uh, it's redundant all right, so we're at the point where we have our left bracket over here in place. We just have the bolts in loosely, finger tight. And then I have the floor jack kind of holding up level. So before you put this left side bracket in for permanent, you know, for good, you've got to slip this piece here in this right here see it sticking out so you slide that piece in and then you put this bracket back on loosely support it with that and the bolts are in there it's just just slightly tightened so now I'm just gonna take a wooden block and a <coughs> shop hammer and uh, just slide that over
might need to raise this floor jack up just a little bit, maybe. Kind of getting a little binding somewhere. That's coming out the end already. So we just need to determine where our center point is. Once we determine our center point, then we can finish tapping this into place. And then we can go ahead and tighten down those bolts on that bracket. Then once we do this, also we need to uh, make sure and test the ramp where it comes down. It's not gonna hit this. I don't think it's going to. It's quite a bit of space right there. So the ramp come kind of be like that. So I'm just gonna clear. You may have to take your uh, receiver hitch out to lower the ramp. We'll see. All right, let's see if we can center this up. So we need to go more that way for sure. So another way we can find our center point is just to measure the excess uh, tubing that's coming out on the back side of the bracket and make sure it's the same measurement on both ends. So we can do that and then compare that to uh, centering it up with the measuring tape. All right. All right. So we roughly have an inch and a quarter Okay, yeah, we just have uh, basically we just have a quarter of an inch sticking out over there, so we got a ways to go. Okay, so we got three quarters of an inch sticking out over here. And we have three quarters of an inch sticking out over here. That looks pretty good as far as the tubing coming out of the brackets wise. So I'm gonna step back and just kind of see how it looks. That looks pretty centered. It looks uh, really good right there. All right, so we got it centered. Uh, everything looks good spacing all the way across so we're gonna go ahead and uh, tighten up these bolts and then I still have the two vertical bolts the holes to drill and put those bolts in and then uh, once we do that we'll uh, recheck our measurements for this piece make sure we're still centered and then we got to drill a hole here and on that side put our bolts through there. So once you get to this point where brackets are installed, cross member bar is installed in place, you lined it up evenly. Okay, I drilled these holes underneath and this one right here. Now then, it's hard to get that bolt in the hole through the back of this tube. Back of this tube right here. So what you gotta do is, they supplied you with these little wire things. So you screw the end of the bolt on that wire there. All right, so you just grab this. First, we gotta put on our washer. Let's put our washer on. Now, let's screw that on to the wire. All 
All right, so we're gonna screw it till that little bent piece is touching the end of the bolt. Just till it's tight right there. All right, so we're gonna feed this piece. We're gonna feed the end of the wire through the tube. Then it's coming out of the hole there. So I want to face that long end back that way. Now I got to work with the other one, but this one is kind of having a hard time. Let's see what we got here. Not sure why this one's having a hard time. The other one went pretty smoothly. Mm. Let's see what we can figure out. Let's see. Oh. Might be kind of hitting that other bolt. So I just gotta move that washer a little bit. We're almost there. Okay, washer. All right. I'm going to try to get that washer. There we go. So that washer was getting in the way. So once I pushed the washer back up against the bolt, it came through. So that's what the little wire is for. Okay. Just to help feed that bolt through. Now I just take that off. And they give you four of these wires. So if you break one, it's fine. You know, you should have three more in your kit. All right. Just getting up to the tight and then i still don't have a torque wrench but this is my largest so like i said and i just by hand with this as hard as i can and, you know i figure that's gonna make it work all right so now all we got to do is drill the other two holes on the other side put those bolts in place and then uh we got to run the wiring so I'm not going to try to tap into the existing wire of this treader. What I have is a 24 foot roll of four prong cable for a treader wiring harness. So it's the four prong harness and that's all that's required for our little uh, 12 foot utility treader that we're going to pull behind here. So uh, I'm gonna finish this drilling these two holes, get the bolts installed, and uh, we'll bring you back, show you how we're running the wiring, and then, uh, then we'll take it for a test ride. All right, so here's what we're doing for the wiring on the for the utility trailer that's gonna be pulled behind 
the RV. <clears throat> so we got the four prong wire and I got two 24 foot rolls of the wire. I might have to go get a third, I don't know. It's gonna be close. But, so we got a zip tied wrapped around the post here, twice zip tied, zip tied behind the frame, goes over the battery box, up and under the frame. <clears throat> so what we did, we come through here, and for the gooseneck plug, we have converter plug, seven prong to four. And that's what's gonna give us our electrical for the utility treader. All right. So I left about that much slack there. That should be plenty for as we're uh, turning and whatnot. And it's not gonna drag or catch on anything. So, let's go under here. Ah. Let's see what we can see here. going over those struts through that pipe thing the brackets on there and let's go down further oh it's contorting the sun is blinding me all right so you can see the line there coming over the hose sewer hose tube the bracket and then it goes those little uh, cable strips or those little wire straps. All right, so here's where the two 24 foot rolls meet together, and I just uh, electrical tape that. All right, so we're running here. Sorry, I was trying to contort underneath there. So here's our gray water discharge pipe and then now we're gonna go through this tube right here so the tube goes back quite a ways so that's where we're at now oh, the wind's picking up too let's see if we can get this situated here so we got these uh fiberglass these are uh, feeder poles so I zip tied the plug at the end to the first one and now we're just feeding it through attaching more of these fiberglass rods this is what's feeding the wire down through the tube Another one here. 